Yes, you do. Thing you get is to say hello and good Lord. We are so glad to see you all tonight. We have got a really special treat for you here. We've got some wonderful folks from the college, and we are so happy that you have joined us this evening. Look at got all it. those folks. All right. A few Come more people in. coming in. Oh, yeah. We'll give, it, we'll give it a second. We got folks coming in. I want to give everybody a chance to join us this evening. How are you guys doing? Hi. Doing how you great. Doing, doing real good. Thank you. Welcome. If you guys want to unmute real quick and say hello, we're going to, we'll, we'll mute it when we all get started, but we love hello. seeing you all tonight. It's been a, been a little while since we've had a chance to join with you. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. We've hello. got Andrew. Makira. Hello. Great to see you all. Hello. 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 I like your little picture, Spencer. That's great looking. Is that Tony Dungy? He used to be the coach of the uh, Indianapolis Colts, I think. That looks like him. All right, Michelle, I think we are good. Are we good? Yes. All righty. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Fletcher, and I am the academic recruiter for the college. Thank you all for joining us this evening, and thank you for your interest in CVCC. I hope that everyone is doing well, and it's great, absolutely wonderful to have so many of you on this call this evening. If you can take a look with me real quick at the agenda. Now, I know you don't have one, uh, a physical uh, copy, but look real quickly with me at the agenda because I just wanna go down and just kind of summarize what we're gonna be talking with you about this evening, because I promise you, we have a lot we wanna share with you. First of all, I need you to know our theme for the evening is CBCC is the right choice right now. And we will spend the next hour and 45 minutes uh, sharing with you why we believe that to be true. And so what we will do for the next hour and 45 minutes is engage you with the kind of programs and opportunities that we have here at CVCC. We're gonna talk with you about how to get started. So you, you're gonna hear about the admissions process. We're gonna talk with you about the first year. That first year can be a little scary sometimes, but what we want you to know is we got you. We want you to know that we have a whole onboarding process uh, that we've set up to make sure that we can make your transition into CVCC as smoothly as possible. And then we do the handoff in that second year. So we will have someone talking with you about the second year experience. We will have someone talking with you about student uh, accessibility services, some support. You know, there may be a time or two that you might need to access this service and we want you to know, know that it's out there. As a matter of fact, we have a whole plethora. Somebody go look that word up. We have a whole plethora of resources that uh, we have in place so that again, we are doing everything we can to help you be successful at CVCC. So everything that you would have done on this campus, we have in place remotely. So you will not miss a beat. We have you covered, okay? Um, we will do a student test, uh, a video where we have a few of our students talking with you about their experience. And they will share with you a little bit again about uh, what CVCC means to them and their experience here uh, at the college. And Deanne is gonna come and talk to you a little bit about student life. And then we're going to talk about paying for college. You got to pay for it, right? I am hoping that by the time our financial aid folks get done talking with you about paying for college, you take the whole issue of can I pay for it? Where will I get the money from? Take it off the table because the money is out there and we're going to help you find it. So we have a whole uh, list of people here to help you do that. Then we get into the meat and potatoes. Now we're talking about what does CBCC have to offer? What kind of programs? Well, we're gonna to talk to you about our transfer programs and we're gonna to talk to you about our technical programs. Did you know that in our transfer program, you can complete your freshman and sophomore year of college right here with us before you move on to the four-year school to do your junior senior work? Yes, I said it. You will complete your freshman and sophomore year of college with us, move on from CBCC, get your junior senior work done at the four-year school. Let me say one more thing about that and then I'm gonna move us on. 
because I'm really, really passionate that you know what you're getting here. Completing your freshman and sophomore year of college with us, you are halfway finished, all right? You're halfway done by the time you get uh, to that four-year school. So you're not just spinning your wheels, right? You are getting the work done and it's so cost effective. I'm not gonna even get into it because Ryan is gonna talk to you about that. And then the technical programs, Dr. Uh, Jason Ferguson and his whole team right here will be talking with you about so many opportunities uh, that you can take advantage of in terms of getting skilled and getting back out into the workforce ASAP. So not everybody's gonna do a four year uh, degree and we get that. But we have, again, technical programs where you can get in, get out, get credentialed, go to work and make a nice living. As a matter of fact, when Lynn Diller start talking, you guys need to listen up real good because this guy is gonna talk to you about how to make $100,000 with an associate's degree. All right, you don't believe me, stay tuned, it's coming, all right? So we've got a lot we wanna share with you uh, this evening. And to get us started, Kimberly French is gonna come and she's going to uh, talk with us about the rules of engagement uh, for the evening. And then we're just gonna move on from there. Now I am going to stop sharing my screen, uh, but I hope you got a pretty good feel for where we're going. And we do have several places along the way where we will stop and let you ask questions before we move on to the next topic. All right, sit back, take in all this information. And I'll see you on the other end. Hello, everyone. I'm Kimberly French. I'm the first year programs coordinator at CVCC. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about the ground rules for tonight. First of all, I want to let you know we're being recorded. So this is being recorded so that um, other students who cannot attend tonight will be able to go back and be able to view the same information we're sharing with everyone tonight. Um, if you have the opportunity, because we are doing a drawing and we want to use your name to be able to for that drawing, in if you haven't used Zoom before, in your box in the top right, right beside the mute, and then there's three little buttons. If you click that, you can rename your name on there. So we'll have your name that can go as part of the drawing to be able to be able to get a free three credit course, which is amazing. Um, also, if you haven't used Zoom before, there's also an option on there at the top where you can do the view. You can view in a gallery view, which shows everybody in there, or you can do just the presenter view if you just want to see one person at a time. So that's up to you, however you, you wish to view the screens. Um, also, the bottom part is chat. So at the chat, under, under chat, please feel free to write any questions that you have. Like Michelle said, we will have the question and answer section. Hold your questions if you could to after the presenters speak. We will have a pause in between and then we'll be able to review the questions that are in chat and answer them at that time for you. Um, there's also under the participants, looks like someone's already raised their hand. Omar's raised his hand. So you have found where you can raise your hand um, under the participant list where you can go in and raise your hand if you have a question as well. Reactions is down at the bottom. Um, there are certain reactions. So if you feel like you want to do a thumbs up on something you thought was really cool, um, there's the clap. There's even a heart under there. Um, there's a like, whoo, I, I learned something new. Um, and then a ta-da, a little celebration type, type thing for you. Um, so feel free if you want to use some of those reactions during the presentations for you too. Um, there are no breaks built in in between, but feel free, you're at home. If you need to get up and move around at any time, feel free to do that. Um, also, the speakers, after they speak, they're going to put in the chat their contact information. So once they speak, they're gonna put their contact information there. So if you wanna reach out to them, feel free to get that information in the chat as well. And we are so excited. We're excited to have you and we are gonna kick it off now with our president, um, Dr. John Caps, and he's gonna welcome you. Thank you, Kimberly. Good evening, everybody. And as you've already heard, I'm really excited that you're participating in this open house. And, grateful that I can bring you greetings on behalf of the college community. I feel as if the first thing I need to do is to apologize for my background. You can see that I'm not sporting the college colors this evening. I feel like somebody who's gone to a party in a tuxedo with brown shoes. So I'll try to do better the next time around. But, but that qualification aside, we really are thrilled that you've joined us this evening. 
I don't think anybody who's here tonight would argue with me when I say that we're living through some tenuous un uncertain times. And in times like these, I think it's important that we turn to the things that we can really rely on, the things that, that we can count on. And I hope you're going to leave the open house this evening knowing that you can count on CVCC. First of all, you can count on the value of a higher education. 95% of the jobs that have been created since the Great Recession required some level of college. And I'm confident when I say that the same thing is going to be true in this post-pandemic economy. A high school diploma is no longer the finish line. You've got to have some college credential if you are seeking lucrative and gainful employment for yourself and your family. You can count on CVCC to provide you with that. When it comes to education and training, as you've already heard, you can count on CVCC to offer a program that meets your needs. We offer everything from fast forward programs that enable you to complete a credential in a matter of weeks, not years, to college transfer programs. And in that vein, you can take advantage of guaranteed admission agreements. As you've already glimpsed from Michelle's comments, you can also count on CVCC to provide you with a host of support services, online tutoring, financial aid and scholarships, even assistance with basic needs if you have those needs that you need to answer. In a variety of ways then, I believe that you really can count on CVCC. But the most important thing you can count on is that we care. And I know you're going to see that. I know you're going to sense that in the people whom you hear from this evening. We care about you, we care about your success, and we care about your future. Thus, it probably comes as no surprise to you. You've already guessed this when I say that CVCC really is the right choice right now, and you can count on that. Michael, I want to turn it over to you so you can talk about the admissions process then. Thank you so much, Dr. Caps. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael, and I work in the admissions office, and I want to briefly talk to you about the admissions process. Now, tonight, you're going to hear a lot about our programs and different opportunities at the college, <clears throat> but your first step is to apply to CVCC. So if you're not yet a student with us, you'll want to go to our website, www.centralvirginia.edu, scroll down to the bottom of the page. And in the lower right-hand corner, there are several tabs, and one of those tabs says Apply Now. If you click that, you'll be taken directly to the application portal, where you'll be able to create an account in our application system using your personal email address, and then you'll be able to access the application. And the application itself will take you only about five to seven minutes to complete. So it's uh, pretty easy and short, but you'll wanna take your time and read the questions carefully to prevent any errors uh, on your student account, because what you put on your application goes on to your student account. And if you have any questions about anything on the application, then please feel free to contact us in the admissions office and we'd be happy to walk you through it. Now, once you submit your application, you're gonna receive an email to your personal email that contains your CVCC student ID number, a welcome message to the college, and some instructions about your next steps. Now, this email serves as your acceptance letter because we don't mail out acceptance letters. You'll wanna hang on to that email. And at this point, you know that you are accepted to CVCC and you are considered a full student with us. And once you're accepted, you can go ahead and get your high school or other college transcripts to us as well at this point. Now, there are a couple of scenarios in which you do not need to submit the application. First, if you are a current dual enrolled student who is currently taking classes with us or just took classes, you would already be in our system as an active student, so there's no need to reapply once you finish your dual enroll classes. And second, if you have taken classes with us within the past three years, maybe some of you took some classes with us already, but you needed to take a break for one reason or another, and now you're ready to resume. You would not need to resubmit the admissions application if you have attended within three years. You would still be in our system still as an active student. But if you are a new student and once you are accepted, you'll want to set up your student account. And you can do this by clicking the My CVCC button in the upper right hand corner of our homepage, and you'll be able to set up a username and a password to access your student account. 
This way you can check your account for any registration holds that you might need to get resolved before enrolling in classes. And we have navigators and counselors that can assist you with that too. And also to check to see if you're classified as an in-state student or an out-of-state student. You know, a major benefit of attending CVCC is that we can offer an in-state tuition rate to domiciled Virginia residents, which is much lower than the out-of-state rate. And the admissions application has a section on it called your background. And here is where you're going to establish your eligibility to receive the in-state tuition rate. So make sure you pay close attention to those questions when you're filling out the application. And you need to know as well that, that just giving us a Virginia mailing address doesn't automatically qualify you for the in-state rate. You'll need to answer those questions on the application. Now, if you are classified out of state and you think you should be in-state, you're more than welcome to appeal that. You'll just need to contact the Admissions and Records Office and we can walk you through that appeal process. Well, I think that's all, all I wanted to cover this evening for the admissions process. Again, feel free to contact us in the Admissions and Records Office with any specific questions you might have and we'd be happy to help. So this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to one of our college navigators, Raylene Cope, and she's going to tell you about what to expect as a new student in your first year. Thank you, Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Raylene Cope, and I'm a college navigator here at CBCC. A college navigator is an assigned academic advisor that helps students with their first year at CBCC. So we have a hands-on wraparound approach that assists students with, from the very start of like the application process like Michael was talking about. Um, we also help students complete FAFSAs. We assess a student's college readiness. We, choose, we help you choose and explain all the programs that we have here at CBCC, and we help you get enrolled in classes. And that's not just the end of the process. We also encourage students to take, um, to take our new student orientation that we have um, we work very closely with our instructors. So if a student is struggling in our class and we can receive alerts from them, um, and then we can reach out to the students to try to see what we can do to help get you back on track. We also have um, different things that we can do to help students. So we have different types of resources such as ADA services, tutoring services, career services, and accessibility. Um, to, to basic needs. So like say if something happens in your household and you you need some help or you need something something done, like some basic stuff. We have a community connections coordinator that can help you get back on track with that. There are three navigators, me of course, and then there's Brittany Cochran, and then there's Leah Perry. And we also have a first year programs coordinator, Kimberly French, she's our direct report. And she also rolls up her sleeves and helps students out just as much as we need help. <laughs> um, there are also, um, Lots of other people here that also do help students as well, but we help you through the first year process and we want to make sure that you're on track to a great, great finish and so that you can get to that goal that you would like to achieve. Um, I'm going to put our contact information into the chat. So make sure you guys take a, a look at that once you get a chance. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat for us because we're here to help. And then I'm going to pass this on to Ashley Pearson, who's going to talk about our second year programs. Thank you, Raylene. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. My name is Ashley Pearson and I'm a counselor here at CBCC. As you move into your second year, the counseling team will work with you to make sure you're taking the appropriate courses for your major. If you are pursuing one of our technical programs, you will have a faculty advisor and the counseling team to assist you with academic planning so you can finish your degree in a timely fashion and begin working in your field. If you're planning on transferring, we will work with you as you explore prospective schools and majors and advise you on the appropriate courses to ensure a smooth transfer process. We also have numerous opportunities for you throughout the year to get ready for the job market or transferring. One example is the CVCC Career Fair. We hold this fair every fall and spring and there are typically over 40 local employers that attend. It's a perfect opportunity for you to meet prospective employers, share your resume and possibly get a job. We also have a variety of transfer events. These events include information sessions and one-on-one -on -one visits with four-year schools. Additionally, we hold a transfer fair every fall where you have the opportunity to speak with four-year schools from all over the state and you don't even need to leave campus. No matter what program you pursue with us, you have a team of people 
to support you as you reach your academic goals. And we look forward to you joining the CBCC community. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Meredith McLaughlin, our Student Accessibilities Counselor. Hello everyone, I'm Meredith McLaughlin and I'm the Student Accessibility Services or SAS Coordinator. And I work with students with disabilities by making our college accessible to them. I level the playing field by setting up accommodations for those students. So accommodations are supports and services provided on college campuses so qualified students with disabilities have equal access and opportunity to benefit from classes, programs, and activities. They're provided to any student taking course with the college so that includes dual enrolled in any homeschooled students. A few examples of accommodations would be extra testing time, read aloud for testing, using a reduced distracted distraction room to take tests, recording lectures, priority seating, which would be sitting in the front or the back of the room, or even getting a certain chair in a classroom. Um, the accommodation needs to be related to the disability, the type of disability. So I, I mentioned that about a chair in the classroom. I had a student who needed a chair put in the classroom because she had uh, chronic back pain. So the disability was chronic back pain and the accommodation was sitting in a specific type of chair. Um, when somebody has a, a physical disability, like I can see that, but a lot of the disabilities that students have are not visible. So I help anyone with a physical disability, but I also help students with medical and psychological or psychiatric disabilities. So that would include things like ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, learning disabilities. And I also work with students who have had an IEP or a 504 plan in high school. It's also good to know if you've had any severe allergies, if you're highly allergic to something like tree nuts, it would be a good thing if the instructor knew that you had an EpiPen or to make a general announcement for the students to not bring in tree nuts to class. You would wanna have your accommodations in place when the school begins but you can ask for accommodations at any time during the semester. Although please don't wait until the day before the final. It's a little bit of a process and it's hard for me to get them together in um, just a day. Uh, I know students that they take college classes, they wanna do it without any help, mostly because they don't wanna have a, st a stigma or a label put on them. Um, and they ask that they be put in place, which is fine. Um, right before like their midterm, they'll come to me and they'll ask that they get put in place. Um, but I can't, it's fine, but I'd rather just have them in place at the beginning. Um, I keep any of your diagnosis private and confidential. Any documentation given to me is locked up. I don't discuss your diagnosis with your instructors. They only see the accommodations put on the letter. Your diagnosis is never put on the letters. It's up to you how much you want to disclose about your diagnosis, um, but it may help the instructor to help you to know what your diagnosis is, but you're in no way required to tell them. The student can contact their counselor or navigator and they can give you my contact information or you can email me directly to set up an appointment. I will put my contact information in the chat. You can reach out to me privately because I know um, a lot of the stuff we talk about is very private and you just kind of only want to talk to me. Um, I have to meet with a student each semester. Um, mostly the best, the most important one is the first one. Um, it will be a phone meeting and we can you can bring your parents in that is fine because I know sometimes the parents want to be involved in the beginning. And we would talk about what your needs are at the school what kind of accommodations you might need, or you may not even know what you need and, and you could go to class first and you could see what you might need, or we could discuss that. So once you meet with me, then you would fill out an application for accommodations i'll then ask you for documentation so that needs to show you that you have a documented disability. This can come from a medical doctor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, what, um, just depends on what kind of disability it is. Then I'd write up letters with the accommodations on them and I'll email them to the student to read, sign and return to me so that I can send them out to the instructors. And then the instructors will give the accommodation to the student based on what's written in my letter. It's the responsibility of the student to reach out to me initially. It's also their responsibility to reach out to me every single semester. Um, we don't have to go through the entire process um, each time, but I have to update the letters and they have to have the new the newer classes on them each semester. Um, so I have one question. So get ready to type an answer in the chat. Um, so we only allow service animals on campus, no emotional support animals, no pets. And there are only two types of animals that are rec recognized as service animals under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Do you, do you know what they are? I mean, I could give you the first one. It's easy. It's the dog. Yes, somebody said the dogs. What's the other one? I know it. <laughs> I know you know it. it. Is. 
And I bet nobody will guess it. <laughs> nope, no fish. Fish. Horses. Nope. Fish. No fish. <laughs> goat, pig. Hamsters. No Oof. goat, pig. Goat, elephant. Close. Oh my. Elephant. That'd be a big cleanup on campus. Yes, somebody said horse. It's actually a miniature horse because they live longer than dogs and they um, are stronger. Okay. So you may think that just because you have a disability, you can't get accommodations online in an online environment, but you definitely can. I'm here to help you remove those barriers. So please don't let your disability stop you from making the right choice right now. Thank you all. I'm going to put my contact information in the chat so you can reach out to me. And now we'd like you to see a short video with a few students sharing their experiences at CVCC. What makes it so beautiful is in the name, community. You have such a wonderful community of teachers, professors, um, tutors, uh, staff members, administration that are all just so willing to work with you. To not listen to the negative stigma about community college because community college was one of the best choices that I've made. The online classrooms actually are very organized. The professors expect just as much from you online, if not more, than if you were in a classroom setting. They expect you to not, they expect you to learn at your own pace. However, they expect you to keep up with the class. A lot of them chose to upload videos and voice recordings of the lectures and post PowerPoints as well as work. And uh, they did hold Zoom sessions though. They held Zoom tutoring sessions. So if you needed some tutoring or if you were going over the lesson and you really didn't understand what was going on, you always had the option to set up an appointment with the professor or the teacher and they would be always happy to help you and talk to you. And just I feel generally as a student holding a part-time job, that's something that a lot of students at CVCC have. And one of the wonderful advantages of being a community college instead of such a small, close-knit community is that the professors understand. They understand that most of the students are workers, they have families, they have other responsibilities outside of the educational realm. Um, it is invaluable being able to capture an associate's degree for um, less than probably the cost of your car. And you're gonna to start to understand what that means when you realize you can get an associate's degree for six grand instead of 50 grand um, for the first two years of, of a normal um, four-year school. So if you're looking for a way to enhance your skill set uh, and to go out and, and work something beyond a, a dead-end job somewhere uh, and you really want to start working in the skilled trades or maybe you want to be a, a restaurant head chef or, or whatever, CVCC has the pathway uh, and the instructors to help you get there and accomplish your goals. CVCC is the right choice right now. Yay. Good evening, my name is Deanne McDaniel and I am the coordinator of student life here at CVCC and welcome this evening. I wanna give you just a quick overview of student life. Um, we provide your out of class learning. When you come to college, you have those two types of learning. You have your in class learning and then you have your out of class learning. How you achieve that out of class learning is by your participation in clubs through leadership opportunities and participating in the many events that we hold throughout campus. This semester with us being virtual, we have moved our student um, center from being in a physical location into a virtual student center. And we did this so that we can continue to engage with our students and we can still provide that out of class learning for them as well as act activities to um, bring them away from the stresses that they're experiencing during this time. I also wanted to touch base on this evening. Um, we wanna thank our educational foundation and they have provided us with three, three credit classes to raffle off this evening. Mm -hmm. And their value is about $500 in value. In order to win, you must be 18 years of older. You need to be present to win. And if you'd like to win, I've pretty much gotten everybody's name out of here, but if you have a nickname or something that you're using and you'd like for me to use your, um, your regular name. If you would just drop that into the chat, I can pull that over. Um, if you'd like to definitely participate, if you're maybe on your parents' phone or something and you, we wanna put your name in, if you could drop your name in the chat so that we can make sure we can gather that. 
and you're, we'll do the drawing, like I said, at the very end, right after um, the evaluation that takes place this evening. I wish you luck in the drawing and thank you for joining us again this evening. I'm gonna pass it back to Michelle Fletcher, who's gonna do some Q&A with you. All right, this brings us to uh, question and answer time. We can engage you a little bit more. I hope that you have lots of questions. Uh, as you have already heard, we're taking every step we possibly can to ensure your success uh, at CBCC and to meet your academic needs. So for a few minutes, we'd like to go ahead and open the floor to uh, entertain any questions that you might have. I would ask Brittany and Kimberly and others, check the chat. If there's something uh, in the chat that you want to uh, uh, share with us, put it out there and uh, we'll get those questions answered. Yeah, so I was monitoring the chat and um, John had asked um, when Michael Duncan was speaking about the admission process, how do students print out the um, parent sign sheet if you're under 18 and a student is needing a parent signature, how can they access that that page so I didn't know Michael if you wanted to answer that. Yes, yeah, so you can do that. Um... One of two ways, uh, you can contact the admissions office and we can send it to you. We can do it that way. Um, I believe you can also access that on the website. Uh, if you go to the search bar and type in downloadable forms, I, I believe it's on that page. I, I think our dual enrollment coordinator is on the call too, so she might want to chime in if there's a, a better way to do that, but those would be the two recommended ways. Yeah, actually the easiest way, Michael, would be to go to the dual enrollment page and I have a parent permission form that's been updated to include the language that's on the application because a lot of people do not have access to a printer. So they can just go in and do that and then email it to dual enrollment at centralvirginia.edu. Great, Great question. Perfect. And we've got another question. How are students able to verify that they've been accepted to CVCC? Yeah, so you can check your personal email, whichever email you use to um, create your application, that um, acceptance email that I mentioned will be sent to that email address. So whatever email address you used, um, check the spam folder maybe. I've, I've, I'm not aware that our emails go there, but you might want to check that folder. Um, you, you know, again, you can also call the admissions office. We can look you up in mm -hmm. our system as well. And that raises a really good question. And Michael, I'll put you on the spot once again. Um, so when I get that email, right, that awesome email that says, hey, I'm here, what do I do next? How do, how do I like access CVCC? What's the best way? Yeah, so there are instructions on that email that tell you what uh, your next steps are. Um, always, if you're not sure, you could you could give us a call or shoot us an email. But the instructions are on on that um, on that message that's sent to you. Again, if if you have specific questions, you don't you're just lost. Please call us. Please contact yeah. us. We're open eight to five. The counseling offices, the admissions offices, we're accessible to you. So, please contact us if if you find yourself lost. Thank you. All right, we've got another good question. Sierra is asking, how would she know if her FAFSA was approved? So Ryan, I know you'll be speaking about financial aid later, but I didn't know if you wanted to address this now or if you'll go over it. Sure, no, that's a good question. So there's a, well, that's a tricky question. It seems like a simple one, but um, when, you, when you submitted your FAFSA, you should have received an email confirmation from FAFSA letting you know that it was submitted. So that's one step. But then remember on the FAFSA, you have to select which schools you want your FAFSA sent to. So depending on if you're interested in this upcoming spring in January or this next fall, so next August, it depends because there's two different FAFSAs that you would need to do, one for one year, one for the other. I would say email us or call us in the financial aid office then we can talk to you specifically about it to see which year you're planning to enroll and which FAFSA needs to be done so we could look it up individually for you. All right, Lakira is asking, how are the hands-on portions for the paramedic classes being handled during, during this time of virtual online classes? Sure, and I'll hit on that in just a bit in more depth, but all of our career technical education courses and programs that have a hands-on component, uh, we do so by social distancing and, and providing safety for our students, but they are handled on campus 
and I'll explain a little bit more in a bit. Okay. Great, and Omar has a really good question um, asking if it's possible to do all of your classes online. Hi, Omar. We do have a bunch of programs that are you can actually do completely online. So there are some programs, of course, that you cannot do online. So our welding and our machine tool and our culinary arts are programs that require hands on experience. Um, but yes, there's a lot of general studies. That's one of our biggest programs. And that one, you can do almost everything online. Raylene, can you talk a little bit about the difference between synchronous and asynchronous? Yes, yes. So let me make sure I get this right because I, I typically don't use those particular terms, but we have live online classes, which means that they are done over Zoom, just like this, or even mm -hmm. Google Meet, and they meet at a specific time of the day. So you can, you will get a notification that, okay, then my class is from five to 530 or whatever the time frame of your class is. And then we have classes that are online based in which the instructors post assignments using Canvas and they just simply post all the assignments there and they give you due dates as to when they're done and you just work at them at your own pace. So lots of people always ask, what's the pros and the cons? So if you're better with, you know, working at your own pace and better with reading and kind of self-instructing, then yes, go for the just regular online classes. And I think that's called the what, asynchronous? right? If you feel like you would do better in a classroom setting where you get to see the instructor and the other students in your classroom, just like we're doing right here in the mm -hmm. Zoom, then you want to go with the live online classes, which are synchronous. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to do the best that works, whatever works best for you, but um, whatever is most comfortable at the time. Um, asynchronous classes do work best for people that have full-time jobs or busy lifestyles. Even though we have real-time classes, we also record them. So students can play them back if you miss something, um, but they still may have a attendance component and you may wanna talk to your instructors first before um, deciding not to show up for a live online class. All right, thank you very much. Um, well, we're gonna keep moving on so that we uh, go ahead and talk a little bit now about uh, paying for college. And so uh, Ryan McNamara is going to uh, talk with us and, and get that started. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. We're going to go through a quick PowerPoint presentation. And so hopefully this will be beneficial to you. So first, I'd like to say welcome and congratulations. Welcome for being here tonight for this open house. And congratulations, because you are ready to, the, to take the next step in your life. And so whether you're still in high school or just graduated high school or have been out of college for a while or have never attended college. Um, welcome and congratulations. So a couple of things we want to talk about this evening, how to pay for college. So Michael Duncan had mentioned the admissions process of how to apply to the college. So we want to talk about how to apply for your federal student aid or your financial assistance. Okay. So the one thing that you do want to do is submit the FAFSA. So you're going to go to FAFSA.gov to apply. Do not go to fafsa.com or fafsa.edu. Those websites will charge you for the same thing that you can do for free. So try to do it. If you need help, you can reach out to our financial aid office and we can walk you through some of the steps on the FAFSA that you're having trouble with. So how much does it cost to attend CVCC? As Michael had mentioned on the admission process, the in-state tuition rate is $161.25 per credit hour. So to give you an idea, if you're enrolled full-time, which is 12 credit hours, your tuition and fees would be $161.25 times 12. So that kind of gives you an idea of the charges of what your tuition and fees would be. So now the FAFSA. This is where it gets a little confusing sometimes because you have to do a different FAFSA depending on what year you're planning to enroll. So if you're planning to enroll at CVCC this upcoming spring in January, you're going to want to submit the 2020-21 FAFSA, okay, because we're still in the 2020-21 academic year. If you're planning on enrolling next fall in August, you want to submit the 2021-22 FAFSA, okay, so make sure you pay attention to the years when you go into the application. 
Um, a couple things to keep in mind, if you are under the age of 24, you're gonna need parent information on the FAFSA. So a parent will also need to electronically sign the FAFSA with you, okay? And make sure you put CVCC school code on your FAFSA so that when you submit the FAFSA, that's what allows us in the financial aid office to receive your FAFSA. Another thing, your, your financial aid is not complete until we've received any documents that we may need from you. So when you submit your FAFSA, it may require additional documentation that we need. So make sure that you follow through on that. You can go to your student center in SIS and it'll show you a list of a to-do list, a list of things that we need from you. So make sure that you follow through on that. Now, why should you complete the FAFSA? So for our last spring semester, of those students that um, applied for the FAFSA, 85% received some type of financial assistance. And those that did not apply or complete a FAFSA, only 3% of them received some type of financial aid. So again, it's important that you do submit your FAFSA in order to see what you're eligible for in financial aid. Now, some of the things you may be eligible for, we have federal grants. So the Pell Grant is based on financial need and um, household size um, of, of you and your family. So the Pell Grant, the maximum amount is about $6,300 for the year. So you're eligible for that if you qualify. There's also another federal grant the um, Federal Supplemental Educational Opportunity Grant. It's up to $300 a year. The one thing I wanna point out on this is it is first come first serve on the money. We only have a limited amount of money that we're able to award. So the sooner you apply for admission and submit your FAFSA, the more likely you are to be eligible for that grant because we still have money for it. Then there's some state grants. So if you're a Virginia resident, you may be eligible for the Commonwealth Grant. Uh, for that, you have to be enrolled at least six credit hours a semester, which is part-time. And we also have a part-time tuition assistance program, which is eligible for students that are enrolled one to eight credit hours. So right here with the state grants, regardless if you're taking one credit hour or all the way up to full-time, there is financial aid that is available to you. And one thing that we're going to talk about in a little bit is the CVCC foundation. There's a foundation grant or foundation scholarship also you may be eligible for. So a lot of times, if you're not eligible for federal or state aid for one reason or another, this is also a good opportunity for you to be able to, to find additional assistance to help you um, through the semester. So on our website or on the link on this this uh, presentation, we have a net price calculator on our website. So if you're interested, you know, you have not submitted your FAFSA yet, but you wanna get an idea of what aid you may be eligible for. It only asks for a handful of questions, but it can give you a pretty good idea of what, what um, your financial aid may look like and what your charges would look like and things like that. So that would kind of give you an idea of if you would actually owe anything or not, or if your financial aid would cover everything. So one common question that we receive is, can you use your financial aid to purchase books and maybe even a laptop? And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. So if your financial aid, if your scholarships and grants are greater than your tuition and fees for the semester, that extra money is yours. And so we have a bookstore on campus. You can come in and purchase your books, supplies, um, apparel, and laptops and you know computer things like that if you need. So that's a good resource for our students. You don't have to come up with the money out of pocket. You can just use your financial aid for it. And the last thing I wanna mention, things have changed. And so you know when you're submitting your FAFSA, it's looking at 2018 or 2019 income information. And because of the coronavirus and things that have, have taken place recently, if, um, you know, if somebody in your house has lost a job or reduction in income or high medical bills and things like that, let us know in the financial aid office, reach out to us. There's um, a likelihood that we may be able to make an adjustment to your FAFSA, again, which looks at income. Uh, we may be able to make adjustment to that for more real-time information. So it's not looking at 2018 or 2019 information. Um, and then here's our contact information and I will put it in the, um, in the chat. But that is what we have for you. So with that being said, I'm going to pass you on to Chris Bryant, who is Vice President for Institutional Advancement. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Can everybody hear me? Yes. All right. He's very humble. He's not going to tell you, but did you know one time Ryan once beat Chuck Norris in an arm wrestling contest? He did. You'll have to ask him about that. 
um, hey, the foundation is here to serve you because CBCC is the right choice right now. If you're wondering at all, if you've come to the right place, I want to assure you you have uh, right now. So we are, a flex we are flexible. We are accessible. We are affordable. Ryan just told you about the financial aid that is available for you and your family. If you're sitting here now, you've already taken that first step. We want you to take a couple of more with us, and we're going to be with you every step of the way. Uh, don't even consider next fall. Start in January. We have 16-week classes. We have eight-week classes. You're going to want to be with us right now. And let me tell you, this is a good time to take the next step of your pathway or your journey because there are probably more funds available right now than there have been at any time in the past decade or so. The foundation has been around for about 40 years, and our sole purpose is to break down barriers to student success. So each and every one of you that are sitting there, we're going to take all of those obstacles away where you say, hey, I'm not sure this is the right time. We just want to tear those down. Uh, financial aid is going to help you do that. Our staff, our faculty are going to help you do that. And the foundation is going to help you. There's really four steps that you need to take to get yourself in line for scholarships. And again, the, the foundation really does two big items, scholarships and equipment for instructional purposes. So all those milling machines, all of those, um, the x-ray machines for radiology, uh, all the things in mechatronics and the wires and computers, all those things, um, many of those, the foundation jumps in with local industry support and helps buy those things. And we give away $500,000 a year in scholarships to about 500 students. So that really means I got $1,000 for you and our team's gonna make sure that you get that when you apply. So here's the four things you need to do. I put in the chat feature our link. You, The first thing you need to do is apply, right? You need to become a student, one of us. When you do that, you're gonna fill out the FAFSA that Ryan told you about. You're gonna enroll in classes and then you're going to fill out the academicworks.com application for the foundation. When you do that, our team is going to connect with you and let you know how we can help you get a scholarship that's going to, again, ensure that you're going to be one of our students. We don't just stop there. Life is crazy and it can be very difficult and hard. We give away um, emergency funds when fun somebody has just a rough time. If you have um, your you can't pay your rent for some obscene reason or you lose your job or you have a flat tire or you need help with your textbooks. The foundation is there to help you with those things. So I want you to know, whatever the barrier is, the foundation has a team that's going to help you overcome that. So make sure that you go and do those four steps. Get on academicworks.com, fill out your application for a scholarship, and we're going to take care of you. Remember, a team of people are here with you. So make sure you, you come on and join the family. The water is fine. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn you over to a very capable person who is the valedictorian of her family. And also she, um, you know, that dance scene in Guardians of the Galaxy, she actually taught the crew how to do that dance. And so I give to you Emily Pudliner. <laughs> I did, I did teach them that. So, um, hey guys, my name is Emily Pudliner and I'm a grant accountant here at the Community College. Um, I'm gonna share my screen uh, just so I can walk you through some of the payment options that you have um, for paying for your tuition. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Perfect. Okay. So, um, so it's great to have you all. I see there's a lot of people, and it's just it's really exciting to have you all here. Um, so, uh, we have a, a team at our business office, and they're here to make the payment process as easy as possible. So, all the information I'm going to share, it's, it's out on the website. Um, and I'll post those links in the chat and then also my contact information so you can reach out if you have any questions. So, um, so in case you don't catch the links, I wanna make sure you can find where to go on the website. So the first place um, you log in, centralvirginia.edu. Right now we have a banner up at the top and you'll wanna click on that pay tuition um, button right there. And it'll take you to a page uh, with a lot of good information on how to pay for your college. Uh, if 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 that's not there, if we, the website changes before you, you go out there, you can also use the magnifier and just click um, just for payment options, and that'll take you to, uh, to a lot of these sources as well. So that takes you to this general paying for college page, and you want to click on that payment uh, options tab um, that you see there. So that'll take you uh, to another page with the payment specific options, which is what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. So, 
um, with COVID, uh, there's, uh, our business staff, they're working remotely. So the most convenient way to pay for your classes is probably going to be online through your MyCVCC account. Um, we're really excited to announce that for the spring 2021 semester, we're, we were able to eliminate the credit card fee. So there's no longer a transaction fee for using a credit card to make an online payment. Um, so given that and the just convenience of paying online, we're really encouraging you to take part in that um, in that payment route. Another route you can use is to pay by uh, send a check in by mail. So if you do this, um, make sure that you send a check. So don't send cash just because it's unsafe to send cash in the mail. So make sure you're sending a check and then on your check, write your student ID number and also your phone number. That way we can um, apply your payment to your account so we know who's, who that payment belongs to. And then also um, we can call you if we have any questions on, on your payment. Those checks can be sent to the address that I have bolded on the screen there. It's um, 3506 Ward Road, Wards Road, Lundberg, Virginia. Um, and the third option um, is that you can sign up for one of our payment plans. And I'm going to discuss that in more detail shortly on the next slide. But um, before moving on, I just want to reiterate that we're here to help you. So if you have a special need that prohibits you from uh, doing one of these options or paying online, just call our office. We have our team's there and we're we're we'd be happy to set up an appointment for you and and make sure we can walk you through the uh, options for paying for your tuition. Okay, so to circle back to the payment plan options, so the payment plan it allows you to make payments on your tuition because of paying the full cost up front. Um, we're excited to another. We're very excited. Another thing is that our spring 2020 payment plan options gives you more flexibility. So we've adjusted them from how they've been in the past to try to make it much more um, realistic and feasible uh, to, to pay for your tuition. So I, I've said it a lot this evening, but CBC is the right choice right now. And um, for all of the reasons we discussed, but we're also putting this updated payment plan makes it um, really the right choice and makes it uh, very feasible for you to, to attend the college. So to enroll in the payment plan, the steps are listed on the screen. You'll go to your MyCVC account and um, just walk through those four steps. And two things to note, um, make sure you have your pop-up blockers turned off whenever you try to enroll in a payment plan um, or you see the information, it won't pop up. And then also just to highlight that uh, the payment plan for spring 2021, it opens on uh, November 11th. So this Monday, you can begin enrolling in our payment plans. So this spring, we're offering three different plans, which vary depending on when you enroll. So if you enroll by November 30th, for example, the payment plan requires a 20% deposit and then allows four monthly payments. Uh, a few things to note. So the deposit is a lump sum that you pay up front, and this goes towards your tuition amount. Uh, there's also a $25 enrollment fee, and that's in addition to your tuition amount. So that's on top of um, what your tuition costs are. And the charges fee, it's not us, it's our third party uh, that manages the payment plans, uh, that's the fee to enroll in the tuition payment plan. And then there's also the deadlines. You'll know, notice on the far um, right, it's the last date to enroll. And those deadlines really impact uh, the what's available for you in terms of the how the, the payment plans work. So the later you enroll in a, in a payment plan, um, the higher the deposit requirement is, and then the fewer the payments. So you're still paying the same tuition amount, it's just in a shorter time frame. Um, so those, those la uh, last dates to enroll are pretty important to remember. Um, so this page is a really great resource. It's out on the website. Um, it walks you through the payment plans and how to enroll. Um, but as I mentioned before, please just call our uh, business office if you have questions and, and we can walk you through the process. So um, just thank you again for coming tonight. This is my contact information. I'm also going to place it in the chat and those links to the websites that I showed you. Uh, so right now I'm going to pass it on to Rachel Madigan and she will provide some information on uh, Beacon of Hope. Hi, thanks Emily. Um, welcome everybody. My name is Rachel Madigan and I work with an organization um, called Beacon of Hope. And I am the CBCC site director for this organization. I work with Lynchburg City School students. All students that um, enroll at CBCC have the opportunity um, to work with, with us and with Beacon of Hope and myself. 
Um, currently, not on location, but um, I have an office on location, and I'm just here to help with anything we that you may need while being on campus. Um, again, this is for Lynchburg City School students. I'm going to put my information on the chat, and if you have any questions, um, please feel free to email me, and I hope to see you guys on campus soon. Thanks so much. Michelle? I got it. Thanks. All right. This brings us um, to another uh, time for uh, questions and being able to uh, engage uh, your questions um, and if there's anything in the chat. But before we do that, I want to say this. I'm having a religious experience here in my office because I'm looking in the eyes of these students and I'm watching them get converted. I can see them believing that CVCC is the right choice right now. And so I'm over here just kind of having a moment and it's just a beautiful thing. So I am sure that you have heard more than enough at this point and we still got good things to tell you uh, about why CVCC is the right choice right now. Again, we just heard from financial aid, take the money off the table. We will do all that we can to help you become a student here uh, at CVCC. So with that said, let's open it up. If you have any questions, let us get you some answers and uh, we'll take a two or three minutes to do that. And then we're gonna move on. Uh, Brittany, Kimberly, anything in the chat? Yeah, so earlier we had a couple uh, questions about cybersecurity. So I'm, I wasn't sure if we would be talking about that program a little later or if somebody wanted to address um, if the cybersecurity classes are all offered online and basically what is the cybersecurity program like? Hey right, Brittany, I'm I made go some ahead. notes for those programs. So as we as I go over those, I'll just touch on those questions that were in the chat. How about that? Perfect. Sounds good. And then um, we have a question from Jocelyn asking, what is the deadline for the fall 2021 semester? So Imagine Michael or talking about applying for financial aid or applying to the college. Jocelyn, would you want to share if are you asking about the financial aid deadline or to enroll in classes? Um, applying to the college. Oh, okay. All 2021 classes will start August 23rd. So you can actually enroll anytime up until the day before classes begin. So start now, get in early and get your choice of available classes. Registration for spring, uh, for fall, however, will not begin until April, approximately of next year. So plan ahead. That's great. And Karen, um, when they do their, they, so they can go ahead and apply for admission for next fall, right? That is correct. The That's fall awesome. 2021 application is available and open currently. That is, that is fantastic. So yeah, you'll just want to be able to click on that one, right? Michael Duncan, what, what do they got to do to make sure they tell us they want to come next fall? Yeah, so the, I think it's the third page of the application says your education. At the very bottom of that, you, you select your term of enrollment. So you can select spring 21, summer 21, and right now you can also select fall 21. So you can go ahead and apply for fall right now and get that out of the way. That's beautiful. Thank you, guys. Great. And um, a couple more questions, Michelle. Mm -hmm. John's asking, how are classes situated at CVCC? John, are you referring to how they're being offered or like the location of them? And um, Omar was asking again, I think it got addressed in the chat, but just in case you missed it, Omar, he's wondering how you go back and uh, view the recording of this open house. Would someone like to let him know where that'll be? Yes, it'll be um, on our YouTube channel and on Facebook tomorrow. Um, okay, so John responded, he's just, um, asking how, I guess, classes are being offered um, virtually and where they're located if they're on campus. So uh, would someone want to talk about how we do have some on-campus classes going on, but then we also have the virtual courses? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be glad to take that, Brittany. You know, spring, I'll say spring. And hi, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm the Dean of Enrollment Management here. It's wonderful to see you guys tonight. Um, you know, spring's going to look a lot like fall as far as how we do our classes and be primarily online. You know, of course, our trade and our hands-on uh, course offerings, we are doing them in a limited way, quite safely, I should say, here on campus. So for details on 
specific classes. We, I believe, our spring cal uh, our spring schedule is already up there, right? So you'll be able to see if you go to our website, you can click and see, you know, the particulars about the class that you're looking for and whether it's going to be uh, virtual uh, or uh, what we're calling live online as well. So uh, yeah, great question, great question. Okay. Is that it, Brittany? There is a question out there and I'll, I'll go ahead and answer this about the placement testing. So okay. because we are remote, we are not doing placement testing on campus. Um, we are doing something called multiple measures. We will take your um, SAT scores, ACT scores, your high school transcript, um, looking at your GPA, and we'll do that within the first five years after you've graduated. Anybody after five years, we have an adult placement waiver. We'll look at that for you and kind of see where you should be placed based on um, a review of looking at some things on English and math for you. So we have a couple of measures that we'll do, but you'll just want to meet with us first. Um, and we'll go over those options with you and see which one's the best, best method for you. Michelle, can I say one thing before we yes. move on? All right, yes, so on, on the financial aid side of things, I just want to encourage all of you to apply early. Don't wait too long. Um, you know, now is the time, to be honest. You can apply for admission. You can actually submit your FAFSA now. Do it now because I promise you next spring, next summer, you're going to be busier than you are now. And so the, the more things you can get taken care of now, um, you don't have to worry about it in a few months. And so, you know, a lot of times people will panic. They submit their financial aid right before school starts. And then they get frustrated because we may need a document from you or something, and it may take a little while. So now all of a sudden they're panicking that their financial aid is not in order and ready before the semester begins. So again, now is the time to do it. Even if you're not sure if you're coming here, if you're still kicking the tires and you're not sure, the FAFSA does not cost anything, it's free. So do it now, that's my advice. Take it away, Michelle. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now we're getting down to the meat and potatoes. We are ready to talk with you about the programs that we offer here at CVCC. And uh, to get us started will be Dr. Cindy Wallen. She will talk with us about the programs in the arts and sciences. Good evening, everyone. I am delighted that you are here. I feel honored to be among such a group. So I am excited that you have given us this evening to explore opportunities uh, at CVCC. And I do believe it's the right choice right now. As stated just a minute ago, I'm the Associate Vice President for the Arts and Sciences Division. And my division oversees uh, most of the transfer programs. And so what I would like to do is to share with you our programs. Uh, and as mentioned, I, I oversee our transfer programs. And these are two-year associate programs that prepare students to transfer to a four-year school uh, in various majors or, or disciplines. So let me ask you to engage with me for just a minute. If you are aspiring to attend a four-year school at some point in time, or you, after you finish a degree at CVCC, you hope to transfer to a four-year school, will you just type transfer in the chat box? And that will give us an opportunity to get to know who you are because you are our future students. And so we wanna to get to know you right now. So thank you for helping me with that little area. What I would like to do is to share with you some of our programs and you will see here our website. And as you click on that website, um, you'll see a lot of enticing links there. But what I want to direct your attention to is the program and classes. And so when you click on your program and classes, what pops up here are a, uh, several little tiles here. Uh, and these tiles you'll notice are um, sort of meta majors or major categories of study. You'll notice business, education, health sciences, industry, manufacturing, science, technology, and engineering. And what I wanna do is simply because 
uh, my focus is on um, the transfer programs, I want to direct our attention directly there. So what I want to do, and, and let me urge you once this open house is over to go back because this is our campus right here, by the way. Unfortunately, we're not able to ask you to visit our campus right now. So we are gonna explore our campus right here. So we're gonna drop into the humanities and social science, uh, humanities, arts and communication program. And you'll notice here is a couple of programs that are transfer programs. And I want to focus on the general studies. I think it's already been mentioned. That is probably our most popular program. Uh, a lot of our students who hope to transfer uh, enroll in that program. And I, you may or may not know what your transfer goals are. Uh, some of you may be planning to eventually transfer to Virginia Tech. You might be hoping to go to UVA, Radford, George Mason. And if the truth were to be known, I bet there are several of you who are planning to the attend the I don't know yet university and you're going to major in the I'm not sure discipline. Uh, so if you are in that group, you're uh, in great company because if the truth were to be known, there are many of us um, here at CDCC who are right there with you. We had not a clue. So what I would like to do is to welcome you and show you the general studies program, because as I said, that is uh, the program that is typically uh, accepted or gone into by many of our students and naturally. Uh, hopefully it'll pop up. It was here just a minute ago. But the general studies program is a transfer program that covers many of the gen eds and by that what i mean are those courses that are essential for every four-year program you'll notice that i have here uh, the general studies which is the associate of arts and sciences and we have what is a linear progression a pathway that you can course by course walk through this program and complete it there are several things here that I want you to notice with the general studies. One of the first courses that you'll take, no matter what your program is, is that college success skills. That's a very important course because you're going to learn in there some um, study tips. You're going to explore careers. You're going to do a lot of interesting things. One of the things that you're going to work on is that time management, which is crucial. But nested within this general studies program, also English, you'll notice the composition courses, there's English, there's math, there's history, there's sciences, you might be want to take biology or chemistry. Uh, all of those programs there uh, are, are building that foundation. There are humanities electives and social science electives, and there are even transfer electives. So all of these are what we classify as those gen eds that you would need no matter what school you go to, no, no matter what degree you plan to major in, it's going to provide you with that foundation. Another program that we have, and it's very similar to the general studies program, is the liberal arts degree. And this liberal arts degree is for those of you that maybe want that foreign language component or you need that foreign language. And you'll notice that the liberal arts has a foreign language uh, component for those of you that maybe are transferring to one of our local schools that requires that language, this might be the route that you want to take. We also have an education program. Uh, this program is probably more geared for those who hope to go into elementary education or hope to uh, go into some related aspect. And again, the education program, this is the pathway that's very common. You'll see about all of our programs have a, a very linear progression pathway for our students to, to move through. And again, you'll see the English, the math, all of those various components. In addition to the general And I'll mention the in the science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM, we have several um, areas here, but I want to focus quickly on the sciences, the engineering, and then the engineering technology. So in the sciences program, we actually have three pathways. 
And these sciences are people who they know they want to move into some sort of field that's going to involve science. It's going to be science related. And we actually have three pathways. We have just the general science. And so maybe that's, you're not sure exactly where you're headed, but it'll get you a good start. Then we also have the life sciences specialization uh, that might be for going into uh, neuroscience or uh, something along that line, biomedical pathway. Then we also have a physical sciences specialization, and that's where your chemistry, physics um, type of, of courses that would prepare you in that route. And last but not least, I want to quickly mention our engineering program. The engineering program is a very challenging, very rigorous, but very rewarding program. Um, it is an Associate of Science degree. Many of our students who move into the engineering program uh, transfer to Virginia Tech, UVA, uh, VCU, uh, go into uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, aerospace, a lot of options there. This is a very challenging program, as I said. And if you notice the pathway here, I just want to point this out for you. As I mentioned, it's a very challenging pathway. Again, it has the English and the math and the history and what have you, but it's also very heavy into math. So you're going to need to be really, really good at math because it's got Calc 1, Calc 2, thermodynamics, statics, uh, mechanics of materials, a very challenging program. This program is designed for those who want to um, maybe design the airplane, maybe they design the program. They don't want to build it, they want to design it. So they're going to be sitting in their offices designing those programs. This again is a very rigorous program, 69 credits, but many of our students do well and go on to Tech, UVA, VCU. We also have one last program that I'll share with you, and that is the engineering technology program. This is more of the applied science degree. This is for those who, again, got a lot of math, you're good at math, but you're gonna be the plant manager. You're gonna work in, the, in the, the, the plant, but you're gonna be the manager. And these are all programs that allow you uh, opportunities to transfer. Now, let me quickly say that if you're gonna go into a transfer program, the very first person you wanna to talk to is an academic counselor. Ms. Emily Muniz is our academic counselor. And as I pass it off to her, I, she is definitely the guru of uh, gurus in terms of transfer. But if you have questions, reach out to her, reach out to me, and I will post my contact information in the chat box as well. Again, uh, talk to Emily. She's the transfer guru. Thanks, Cindy. Um, so uh, as Cindy said, I am the transfer counselor at CVCC. Um, I have a lot to share with you and only a little bit of time. Um, so I will say that, you know, we are here to help you. We will help advise what classes you should be taking. Um, when she showed some of our programs for transfer, there are a lot of elective options and that's so we can tailor that to your transfer plans. So um, just know that we're gonna help you through all of that, you know, don't hesitate to reach out if it seems overwhelming and you have questions, you know, we're here to help. Um, I'm going to share my screen also so that I can direct you to the transfer page. You can either follow along or you can at least um, come back to it later because, again, there is a lot of information. Um, so if you go to centralvirginia.edu and back to the programs and classes page, we're going to scroll down a little bit further and click on transfer information here. Now again, there's a whole lot of stuff on this page. You'll see there's a lot of stuff on the left here. Um, for tonight, I'm just gonna talk about these three items right here. Um, so the first thing is guaranteed admissions agreements. And so Dr. Capps referenced those at the beginning. It's a really great opportunity. Um, I started as a community college student myself and I wish I had uh, known about this because it was a great opportunity um, that I could have taken advantage of. Um, now that was a long time ago, um, so you all have this available to you now. Um, basically, the Virginia Community College System has agreements with all of the colleges and universities that you see here. They list the public schools first, 
um, than the private. So all of the schools in our area are gonna be there. And then any other colleges or universities um, that we have agreements with are gonna be listed at the bottom. So basically what guaranteed admission is, is if you meet the minimum GPA requirement and you complete your transferable associate degree, you're gonna be guaranteed admission to that school. I'm gonna click on one of these um, just to give you an example. These can be anywhere from two, um, eight pages is the longest I've seen. Um, so there's a lot of information in here. Again, the main two things are knowing the GPA requirement and completing the associate degree. Um, when you see long ones like this or for more competitive colleges and universities, you're really gonna wanna read through these very, very carefully um, to make sure that you meet all of the criteria. If you're not meeting something on here, um, you, know, you may not be eligible for guaranteed admission, but that does not mean that you're not eligible to transfer to that school. It's just, there may not be the guarantee there anymore. Um, so for ODU, for example, they have a 2.5 GPA requirement. And then again, you need to complete the uh, transferable associate degree to be eligible. Back to this page, we also have articulation agreements. These are the exact same thing. These are guaranteed admission agreements. However, they are with CVCC specifically and the schools that you see listed here. Um, I like to point these out, um, particularly with JMU. Um, we have a lot of students who are interested in James Madison University. Um, and so they weren't on that previous screen that we were just looking at um, because they do each of their agreements individually. Um, ODU is on here again because they actually have program specific um, agreements with us. And they are with um, some of the programs that Dr. Ferguson is gonna speak to you about in a little bit. Um, these are not transfer programs, but they do articulate to ODU. So that's something to note there as well. And then finally, I'm gonna talk about our co-enrollment programs. Um, so Lynchburg, we have four private college university, colleges and universities in our area. Um, and we have these co-enrollment agreements with all of them. Um, so what that is, is you would need to be duly admitted to both CVCC and either Liberty, Randolph, Sweetbriar or Lynchburg. Um, if admitted, you would be eligible to take one class each fall and spring semester at CVCC's tuition rates. So you know, if you know that you wanna to transfer to the University of Lynchburg when you finish and you wanna get started, you can apply for the co-enrollment program and get your feet wet there. You can take a class each semester uh, with them while taking most of your classes with us. You can also take advantage of extracurricular activities, resources on their campus, such as the gym, their library, bookstore. Um, all of those benefits will vary from school to school, um, but they're there. And so this is a really great opportunity, again, if you know um, the school that you wanna to transfer to. I will be the advisor um, for you for this. So that way we can make sure that all of the classes that you take will transfer back to CBCC both so that it's um, you know, going towards your associate degree, but also if you're getting financial aid, that way the course can be covered by your financial aid at CVCC. Um, I'm gonna put my information in the chat so that you have it. I, again, encourage you to check all of this out. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I think we may pause for some questions if anyone has questions about the transfer programs. Um, you want to put those in the chat, but thank you for joining us. Not seeing any questions just yet. Does anybody have any questions they want to post in the chat or unmute yourself and ask? I have one about me. So Emily, how you doing? But there's two of us on here now, so I assume you're talking to me. Though. There's two, Emily. Oh, that's right, Emily Pudliner. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, if I do, if I want to transfer to one of our local schools, when I when I get there after completing my CVCC degree, what am I a? If I am I a junior, am I fresh or what? Where do I so go? What, how do I? Yeah, that's a good question. And that's why you definitely want to work with a counselor to make sure that you're taking the right classes. We want to try to tailor your degree as much as possible to what your transfer plans are. So um, if we know where you're going, you know, we can ensure that you're meeting all of the, you know, freshman and sophomore year requirements with us. And so ideally, you'd be transferring in as a junior. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. 
And we've got one more question for you, Emily. Justin's asking if every course has a transfer program and he seems to be interested in cybersecurity. So, um, I mean, again, we, if you enroll in one of our transfer programs, we'll make sure it's the right one because um, as Dr. Wallen showed that we have a few. Um, cybersecurity can vary depending on what school you're transferring to. So we may advise um, general studies, we may advise engineering, um, we may even advise science. It just really depends on the four-year school that you're planning on transferring to and what that degree looks like. And Yakira is asking, um, what if there was a college that wasn't listed, I think on the list that you had briefly shown um, that she wants to transfer to? So on the first list that I showed, um, that was um, the guaranteed admission agreements that the Virginia Community College System has. And um, we're part of that, of course. Um, it's most of the schools in Virginia. Again, there are some that do them individually, like JMU. Um, if you didn't see your school on there, we may not have an agreement with them, but that, again, does not mean that we cannot help you, you know, be prepared to transfer there. Um, you know, we don't have any agreements with um, out-of-state schools, but we have a lot of students that transfer out of state. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're going to advise you, you know, as soon as you know what the plan is, and I know sometimes that's hard. You know, I started as an undecided student myself, and, you know, we do our best um, with what we have, but um, as soon as you know, we will advise you, um, you know, almost to a T to what is needed for that. Okay, and now let me just say one thing and I'm gonna move it on so that uh, Jason can, and, can bring us home. Um, we're not only looking at what you do with us here and what's required in terms of to secure the credential that you are trying to get from us. We're also looking at where you're going. And so uh, Emily's made that point uh, uh, very clearly that uh, we're looking at what you need to do here, but we also have an eye with you for where you're going to make sure everything stays lined up uh, so that you will be able to accomplish your goal here and smoothly uh, transition to your next place. Okay, so Jason, uh, Dr. Jason Ferguson is gonna come now and he's going to uh, talk with us about uh, professional and career studies. And they're gonna bring us in. Jason? All right, thanks, Michelle. Good evening, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen as well quickly. And while this is sharing, I just wanna say a lot of you seem, or a good amount of you seem that you may be interested in, uh, and potentially uh, as far as transfer degrees go. And, you know, for me, I'm not like Dr. Wallen. I'm not a math guru. So the math I like is counting the money in my pocket or maybe the music appreciation is me singing all the way to the bank for some of the jobs that you can get with uh, some of our programs. So I wanna share those with you. These are gonna be credit and non-credit programs and I'll explain a little bit about each of those with you. And these are actual photos from our programs. So um, when you look at these, you're seeing our students, our faculty members that are involved. And really our whole division, our whole, our whole list of programs in professional and career studies, it's about getting the skills to get a job and, 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 and to make some money. And these programs vary. Some of the non-credit programs may be several weeks. And then when we get into the degree programs on the credit side, they may be a couple years. So it just kind of varies with that. And I'm gonna answer, I made some notes for the questions specific to paramedic, uh, cyber I've got here, some fast forward questions I saw, and then you'll have a chance to uh, ask any questions after that. So here's just a list of some of the programs that we have. And these different programs vary, and I can give you more specific information uh, individually. You can reach out to me. I'm going to give you my contact info after this. And of course, we have all the great navigators and counselors with us uh, tonight that can also answer these questions. But under business, um, you're going to see, you know, tonight we have some of our program experts with us, and I'm going to let them get uh, more into the information a little bit deeper with their individual programs because they can tell you a lot more than I can. But some of the ones that aren't represented here tonight, or if you maybe didn't know we had, again, feel free to reach out. Uh, things like the business administration, business management, uh, general clerical, uh, any of those type of programs under our business area. We also have tons of health science programs. And I'm gonna tell you, as far as health sciences go, we've got some of the best programs that you will go to in these areas. 
And some of them are going to be degree programs. So when you're talking about paramedic, you're talking about radiologic technology, you're talking about respiratory therapy, they're going to be two-year degree programs. And a lot of those programs will, uh, they'll be accepted by four-year schools towards a four-year degree later on. So the great thing about our programs, a lot of them, you're going to get industry credentials along the way. You can maybe get out there, start making some money and get into the workforce. And as you continue, you can work through to other credentials. You can work through to achieve that diploma, certificate, degree, whatever that last level is with us. And then maybe apply that to a four-year degree now or later down the road. And in our workforce area, which is our non-credit area, uh, we have what are called fast forward programs. And the great thing about fast forward programs are that the Commonwealth of Virginia pays two thirds of the tuition. And the other great thing with fast forward programs is everything's included in them. So tuition, the books, the supplies, everything, testing fees, anything that goes along with that program, it's gonna be included in a fast forward program. So we have a ton coming up this spring and we have uh, the, the certified medical assistant program starting with medical scribe. We have uh, pharmacy tech, we have phlebotomy, we have advanced EMT, and we may have some, some others that will be starting. We have a core for our NCCER that's in a, and, and, uh, and our electrical program that's under a manufacturing I'll get to in a second. But all of those fall under those fast forward programs. Commercial driver's license, I'll get to that. That's a fast forward program. So you, you get in those programs. They take several weeks to several months. They're quick. That's why we call them fast. And you are able to get that credential and get out into the workforce. In our industry and manufacturing, we've got a couple new ones getting ready to start up this spring as well that we're excited about. So this CAMT, that's Certified Apartment Maintenance Technician, that's not that doesn't mean you actually may work in the apartment complex and do this. You may, but it's going to provide an overview of different skills, how to fix a refrigerator, how to fix the stove, how to do some basic plumbing, some electric, basic electrical wiring, those type of things. So. Uh, in the apartment industry, it would be the, the type of maintenance position there, but we have a ton of other folks that have reached out to us to say, you know, we really need people with these skills and, and not just one skill, but a multitude of skills. So this is, we're excited to be able to offer that starting this spring as well. I told you about CDL. Um, some of the, the main ones we have here, and you'll hear about welding tonight. We have HVAC for uh, heating and air. Uh, we'll be next fall looking to add on industrial maintenance, but we still have some classes that will fall into that kind of pathway that can be taken this spring and we'd be happy to explain that to you machine tool uh, Lynn Dillard's going to talk to you tonight about that that'll be great uh, for you to get some information from him he has a great program and then the the new program that we'll be starting in, in workforce in that uh, fast forward program the non-credit is solar installer and in speaking with um, someone who basically coordinates between the education programs and the workforce in the solar industry. Uh, he told me just in our service region and the outskirts of our service region, they're looking to have about 300 job openings over the next year. So this is a class that's gonna take about 10 weeks and you can get uh, certified, NCCER certified, which is a national curriculum uh, in solar installer. And then we also have public safety. And public safety covers a wide range from anything with our law enforcement to EMS, through uh, some fire science. And when you look at, uh, for the EMS program, for example, that program, you have to start out as, before you can move to advanced EMT or move to paramedic, you have to start out at the EMT level. We offer that program every semester as a credit class or classes, and then we offer it as, uh, through our non-credit at times as well. So once you get your EMT, you can progress to AMT, you can pro progress to paramedic, and the job openings in this area are wide open right now. And when you look at our administration of justice degree, that's a basic overview. So it's not just specific to law enforcement or corrections. That can be anything. Maybe you're interested in being a paralegal or you're interested in getting involved in probation and parole or working in the court system or working maybe in social services, and that's, some, that's an area that interests you. Uh, so that's a uh, two-year degree program that we do have available for you and our corrections officer and our law enforcement are very unique we're the only community college in virginia that offers this and those that complete our degree program we are able to uh, put you through a process with our police department who can uh, choose to sponsor you there is a pre-employment 
uh, like polygraph and physical and things of that nature that you have to go through and pass up front. And if you do so, they will sponsor you to go to the police academy. You can actually get certified in law enforcement or corrections uh, through CVCC. And then the last listed on here is, are the telecommunications. Telecommunications, a lot of people call like 911 dispatchers, but you know the, the more proper term these days are telecommunications specialists or professionals. And we're looking to add that on next fall as an official program, but there are tons of job openings right now for that as well. And we can go ahead and look at some things that could potentially get you started uh, this spring if interested. So our technology area, we have several programs. You're gonna hear from Marcy Gale tonight. Marcy uh, has all, a lot of the cool programs that we have now with robotics and stuff like that. And if, if you're like me, don't feel, I, I didn't know when it first came here, we started it. I didn't know what mechatronics was either, right? I'm, oh, that sounds really cool, but what is it? She's gonna explain to you. And, and it's really interesting, a lot of the stuff that's out there and a lot of jobs are heading that way as well. And then you can see we have uh, the, the cybersecurity. And I know a lot of you ask about that. So currently we have what we call career study certificates. And with that, you can um, take those cyber networking type classes and they're um, really kind of the core classes. And what we're looking to do is next fall, so fall of 2021, um, is to offer the, uh, our information systems technology degree with a specialization in cyber, because it depends on what you wanna do. And I think uh, maybe Emily or Dr. Wallen alluded to this when they were talking about the transfer programs. If you're looking to be you know, CSI, work for the Pentagon type of cybersecurity, then that's something that you might wanna look at a transfer degree and, and, and talk to a four-year school and above that, that to know exactly what the best path is for you because that may require that uh, bachelor's degree, probably a master's degree to get to that level, level in cybersecurity. What we have available, if you're looking to stay more local and you're looking to work in the industries here, that's really more about uh, IT, with some cyber knowledge that you can apply within the workforces here. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for you to be able to assist with their technology in-house and protect them from vulnerability on the outside. So that's really what our cybersecurity program is about. And here's my virtual business card. So feel free to reach out to me. I know someone said that they were trying to find out about a fast forward workforce class and they couldn't get someone on the phone. I don't know what number you're trying to call. Here's my co contact info. I will uh, tell you for, from my stance, when you reach out to me, I may have the answers and I'll, I'll give those to you if I do. If not, I'm gonna hand you off either via email or via phone call. I'm gonna hand you off to someone who can definitely assist you. So I don't want you get, to get discouraged if, uh, for the person that said they reached out because maybe that's an old number, maybe there's uh, some other issues there. So definitely wanna make sure you get what you need. Um, and at this point, um, I will turn this over to our wonderful uh, program head for Mechatronics, Marcy Gale. Hey everybody, my name is Marcy Gale and my title is Mechatronics faculty, but I actually, um, focused on two programs, Mechatronics, which is, if you don't know, a mashup in word and discipline of mechanics, electronics, robotics, and IT, internet technology. The other program I administrate is electronics computer networking. And these two programs have a lot of commonality. You can even start, you can even start in the spring and not be quite sure of what you want, which way you want to go, but that's okay because you can start and then figure it out. All right, I have shared my screen here with you to help us go through quickly my programs. And I have a lot of stuff. I have all the cool stuff as Jason was saying. And so I need some pictures to help me explain all of it to you. And the main thing I need you to know is that Lynchburg needs you. We have openings all over the city and in the surrounding counties. I get contacts from, from um, industry all the time. Do you have students? Tell me who your good students are. I have openings all the time, not just at graduation date. And so many of my students are working while they're going to school. Most people wanna know, is there a career waiting for me when I finish? The answer is yes, and not just a job, but I'm talking about a career because what we'll train you to do here to get started, yeah, you can make some bank when you, when you get out of here, 
but you have the potential to advance, receive further training at, at uh, the company and advance into management if that's what you wanna do. All right, what do you have to do to get there? Well, um, we have one year degrees called career study certificates in both of these programs. And by one year, I mean, if you came full time, it would be two semesters to get through it. You don't have to do it full time. Almost nobody in my programs is going full time because they are also working. If you want to go full time, I've got the programs laid out so you can do that. You can also maintain a job and take classes. We have many of our classes in the evenings and late in the afternoons. And the employers in this area are really good about working around work schedules in order to help you go to class. In fact, many of the employers in this area will help you by paying your tuition and paying your books. All right, so for right now, we are one of those programs that is combination. So we'll do some classes online, some classes will be completely online, some will be live, some will be asynchronous, and many have a lab component. If, uh, if you come into one of my programs, I'm not only gonna be your advisor, um, I'll be your teacher for quite a few of these classes. And uh, if you have problems, you're gonna come to me and I'm gonna be the one that gets on you if you're not turning in your homework. So I'm gonna be everything for you when you're in my programs. Now, if you don't wanna to come to campus right now because you are, have concerns about the virus or somebody in your family has concerns, that's not a problem. I am offering everything in dual format. So you can attend class live on Zoom. You can watch the tape later when you have time. You can come to lab live on campus or you can do your lab via video when you have time. We will handle it. All right, here is, I don't have much time and that's why I'm talking really fast. Here's the mechatronics degree plan. You can find this pathway on the website. And if you look down through to about class number 11, you're gonna see all the courses necessary to get a career study certificate in mechatronics. All of those gold colored lines that you see are industry certifications. So you're not only earning academic degrees, but you're also earning industry certifications. They come with little cards that you can show to employers and say, I am OSHA certified, or I am Virginia Manufacturing Association certified. And then if you go all the way through all 23 courses, you will receive an associate's degree that will qualify you for many well-paying uh, great careers right here in this area. Here's the other program I administrate, which is the computer electronic technology, computer networking. So a lot, like I said, a lot of these courses are overlap with mechatronics. However, you're gonna take more electronics classes which include really fun labs. And um, you will also take four classes in computer networking. So you will be prepared for some Cisco networking certifications, the CCNA and others. Um, I just wanna quickly show you some of my fun toys that I have in the lab. We have lots of training equipment. This is a motors control training station. Um, on the left here, we have hydraulics and pneumatics training station. On the right, that picture is my very cool brand new FANUC robot. So by the way, the way to be the robot overlord overlord is to come to my programs and get mechatronics trained. We will learn robotics and all things in between. These are some programmable logic controller equipment that I have in the lab. We are backed by several grants. Uh, Chris Bryant talked to you about the support the foundation gives and the tobacco commission to buying equipment for our programs. The, all the equipment you see on the left there was bought by that. Um, uh, much more of the PLC equipment and the certification equipment is backed by a National Science Foundation grant that we have here at the college. Um, we have a lot of other fun stuff like so learning to solder, laser cutters, electronics equipment. We have a networking lab. We have lots and lots of hands-on equipment. So think of us as the link for you, the student to the industry here in this area. Not only are we gonna train you to be there, I'm gonna hook you up. I'm gonna introduce you to employers. I'm gonna send your resume to them. And um, they're gonna ask me when they have open positions, do I have students? They're gonna come into our classrooms and talk to you about their open positions. So I appreciate your time. I will put all of this information right here in the chat and uh, contact me anytime. I'd love to talk to you some more about my programs. 
And now I'm going to send you over to Mr. Lynn Dillard, who is our machine shop, machine tool programming expert. Thank you, Marcy. First, I'd like to welcome all of y'all out there. And just to say, my name is Lynn Dillett and I am over the machine technology program. We've been here since 1970. We've been doing it for almost 50 years. Go talk to your parents, go talk to your grandparents, ask them, how long have you heard of people being a machinist? Ask them how people that work at BWXT, Framatone, FlowServe, AMG, LNR, all of the people that I directly work with every day, how well they do. Most of my students come in here, they stay about a year and a half, most of them. They start them out at $68,000 a year, starting them. Within one year, they've moved to about 85,000. After that, most of them make between 100 and $150,000. So I want all of y'all to quit looking at Craigslist, quit looking at eBay Motors and go to the dealership and find you the best car you can find on a lot. You'll have no trouble paying for it down here in my program. We do this all the time. As I said, these people from BWXT, my, my shop is called the BWXT shop. The quality control department is the BWXT quality control lab. They are in here working with us. So if you are interested in going to one of these larger companies in our area, come in here, let us put some money in your pocket. Why are you going to school anyhow? Think about it. You wanna have satisfactory of what you do and enjoy what you're doing. On the other side, you wanna make a career and some money at it. And so that's like I said, the meat and potatoes if you heard before. A little bit about what we've done down here. Our students will make electrical components for the nuclear industry. They make it for the nuclear people here in Lynchburg, your hometown. I've had a number of my students to actually go to NASA to work. Um, very nice, nice uh, reward. So if this is something that's interesting to you, I'm just gonna say, get in touch with one of our great counselors up here or either you can go on the website and call me directly i'll be glad to explain this to you like i said i've been here 30 years myself doing this so i've seen a number of successes out here and nothing warms your heart no more than a 19 year old student coming to you just graduated and said hey i just show you this brand new cadillac you just bought 19 years old. So that's pretty nice. His second month he'd worked at BWXT. So I'm going to put this to you. If you want a well paying career and that is clean inside air conditioning and you want to feel great about what you do every day, then come talk to me. And now I'm going to turn it over to a friend of mine, Jewel Newman in the welding department. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good evening, getting some good information. But here in welding, I have one of those programs that is a one-year program. Uh, it requires no official math class nor English class. You hear this, guys? Women, that, that's not your favorite cup of tea. Uh, not saying that you uh, don't need some math skills, because we do have a blueprint reading class. So you would need to know some math there. And of course you need to read and understand the English language to pass any class. But our classes, it's 10 classes for our career study certificate. And um, eight of them are directly welding classes and 65% of your grade is based on what do you do? How do you weld? How well are you welding? Can you follow direction? Can you fit these models up? Uh, Mr. Gillett was talking about the pay. I can't quite match his top pay but I can come close. Locally, uh, $32 an hour, so $64,000 a year. Uh, that's without overtime. With overtime, you could probably push it to $85,000. Uh, now that's after a year or two of skills, not straight out of our program. Straight out of the program, it's gonna be more like 
15 to $22 an hour. But that's, you know, not bad for a one year program with no math or sciences or uh, English required classes. Uh, we also have welding stimulators. Uh, Morrissey had talked about some of the stimulators that she has. So we have welding simulators that was provided uh, by Chris Bryant uh, Education Foundation. So um, they help you learn skills for welding. It's sort of like playing a video game and it's teaching you muscle memory. So you can weld better when you get in the shop so you don't waste as much material. Um, we also have a connection with BWXT. We have a engineer from welding teaching at CBCC. And he's been a great asset getting several of our students hired straight from our program to that $32, $33 an hour job at BWXT. So that's, that's a good thing to have, the good connections with BWXT. But uh, Mr. Dillard mentioned machine shops and true, uh, almost all the machine shops have a welding department. So some of our welders go to work in those small shops. But I guess I'm most proud of a Bedford County homeboy who practiced and practiced and practiced and on his own time. He's now earning about $125,000 a year and he only works about six months out of the year. He has his own equipment and he works out of Ohio. All right. Lynn, someone is um, asking you for your, to put the contact information in the chat for them. They want to know your contact information if you wouldn't mind sharing. Okay, look like Jewel is gone for a minute. So we will go ahead and move on. We Do you will go next. I think I'm off. Yes. Susan. Good. So I still have a connection. You can actually hear me. Yes. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Perfect. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Susan Fitzsimons. I run the x ray program or uh, radiologic technology program here at CBCC. And I just wanted to say, first of all, I work in a really cool division because listening to all these things that Jason has talked about and um, Lynn and Jewel, I said, we really have some awesome programs for students. Mm -hmm. And just to add my two cents, um, CBCC really is not only the right choice right now, but it was the right choice for me 30 years ago. I graduated from the CBCC Radiologic Technology Program. I went to work um, immediately following the program at Lynchburg General. Worked there and became a supervisor. Uh, worked there for 14 years. Came back to CBCC to teach in the Radiologic Technology Program and eventually take over as program director. So if you have six semesters, um, two years, what we're going to do is give you the classroom knowledge to take and pass your ARRT certification examination, which you need to take in order to work in this field. Um, the other half of our program is work with the local facilities, uh, Bedford Memorial Hospital, Lynchburg General, Virginia Baptist, uh, Central Virginia Imaging, Southside Community Hospital, and you will get real-time experience, real-world experience, uh, working with other radiologic technologists, working with your clinical instructors, so that at the end of the two years, you can step right out and get a job. We have 100% job placement rate for as many years as I've been with the program. Um, our students go on to um, be managers at the uh, facilities. Most of the radiology managers are our graduates. If you've ever had an x-ray and you're in this local area, if you've ever had a CT scan, an MRI scan, uh, if you or family members had a mammogram, if anyone you know had a um, a radiation oncology procedure where you receive radiation treatment for cancer, you probably met some of our students and some of our graduates. So we are again a full-time program. Um, we, we do require about a 40 hour a week commitment, but when you graduate, you have the opportunity to do a number of different things within the field of radiologic technology. Um, if you are interested, I'm going to put up a few links to my program's web pages. 
Um, what I would ask that you do if you are interested, make application to the college, but you will need to contact Ashley Pearson or one of the other counselors to start a conversation with them. Um, they will review the admission requirements for my program with you and they will send me a piece of paper letting me know that you are interested in the radiologic technology program. What I will do upon receiving that information is send an application to you. Um, applications are returned to me within about 14 days and I will set up an interview. My interviews normally last anywhere from about an hour to an hour and a half with every student. Um, we have a selective and competitive admission program. I can only take about 14 students, okay? So work with the counselors, see what needs to be done, um, put in your application, let's have an interview, let's sit down, let's talk about the opportunities that we have available for you, and let's get you started on a career in healthcare. Um, again, 100% employment rate for my students for over 10 years. So if you're looking for a career in healthcare, come see me, come talk to me. I'm gonna put up all of my information um, here in the chat so that you have that. If you are interested, you can contact me at any time and I will be happy to talk to you a little bit more about the program and what we do. Um, and I think I am going to send it over now to Mina Hughes in culinary. And thank you guys for all attending tonight. So Mina. Mina, you're muted if you're trying to speak. Okay, there. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Got you. Okay, great. Um, my name's Mina Hughes. I'm the program director for our hospitality and culinary arts department uh, here in Lynchburg at CVCC. And um, most of my students always say, well, you know, Chef Mina, you know, how did you get into the food industry? You know, you know, why are you a chef? And so I was living in Europe in the 90s and we traveled all over the world and we ate at all these wonderful restaurants and everything was so good. And I would say, this is so good. I'd really like to learn how to make that. So I did. So I went to La Cordon Bleu in Paris and um, um, got um, my training there. And then when I moved back to the States, my brother who already was in the restaurant business said, well, when are you gonna come and start working with me? And so I did. And so that was uh, a long time ago in the, in the 90s. And I worked at our restaurant for 11 years. And then I was at Oakwood Country Club for 12 and a half years, which is right on Rivermont Avenue. Uh, I started at Oakwood as a sous chef, then went to the executive chef and the director of food and beverage, and I finally ended up being the vice president of operations. The great thing about Oakwood was that not only does it have the restaurant for the members, but it also has a large banquet and catering uh, part of the facility. So I learned both aspects of the uh, culinary world of the restaurant and the catering side. Uh, so so it's, it's really helpful for my students. So now when my students come, you know, I can tell if they are ready for a fast paced restaurant where, you know, you have to be really fast and get the orders out, or if they are better suited for a banquet and a, um, a catering type where you have more time to, to fix the food uh, and you're not, you know, you need a 13 minute ticket as we say. So with my 22 plus years experience in Lynchburg, um, I know most all the chefs, most all the restauranteurs. So like um, Marcy said earlier, when they need somebody, they call me and go, hey, Nina, you know, I need a, a pastry chef. Nina, I need a line chef. Uh, so they, they give me a call and say they need chefs and I can send them over, send my students over to the correct type of job that I think they would be um, suited for. Uh, so there is, um, continued industry demand in our area, especially in this area. Um, and um, uh, the program is designed to give the students, the individuals, um, a good background of education in the culinary field, and then um, um, then it prepares them for uh, a real world 
you know, uh, job in the kitchen. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the jobs that some of my past students have, uh, I had I have two uh, students that have their their um, their food trucks. Uh, one went on to Cordon Bleu, and then another one also um, um, has. Um, I'm sorry. Let's see. They food truck. Oh, they went on a cruise ship, which was really fun. So that was fun. So uh, we have several different. Uh, programs. We have the culinary certificate, was, which is a three semester program that you can finish in three semesters, and a hospitality certificate that you can finish in three semesters. Uh, we also have um, a culinary arts and management, and that's what most of the students pick. So if you are interested in culinary, uh, you just bring the passion and I'll give you the education and the training. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you, panel. You have put out just a wealth of information. Uh, I am just uh, so glad that we captured this in terms of recording it, because just looking at the chat, I've seen several uh, times where the uh, question has been asked, uh, how do I get to the recording? Can I watch this later? So um, you've done a great job uh, tonight in providing something for the future for our prospective students. So we won't hold up anything any longer. Anybody have any questions, anything in the chat real quick, because I want to respect your time. We've gone over a little bit, but some of you have hung in there with us and I appreciate that immensely. No questions in the chat right now, Michelle. All right, so what we'll do, we'll give it to Kimberly, go ahead and launch uh, the poll. This evaluation is anonymous. We just want to make sure that you got what you needed. I'm going to give you some time and I'll scroll down when I see them starting to be answered. I'll scroll down and there's more questions at the bottom. I'm just going to give you some time to answer the one at the top for you. All right, I'm gonna end the polling and I'm going to sh um, share the results for you so you can see what the results were. Um, so how you heard about the open house was from a counselor that could have been a high school counselor or it could have been a counselor here at, at CVCC. Um, CVCC website and Facebook and then there were some other involved in that as well. The second one, what's your main reason for attending is for enrollment information. That was the biggest amount um, financial aid, the programs, meeting with um, the different vice presidents, uh, associate vice presidents and division faculty, transfer information, workforce, a little bit of all of it really. Um, the major one was enrollment. They did 100% learned um, some more information. It was clear about the, being organized. And we do have a good amount of people that are planning on enrolling for the spring. So we look forward to working with you and helping you along your journey here at CBCC. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Deanne McDaniel where she can get you started for your three free credit um, drawing. Oh, somebody's about to be happy, three somebodies. Okay. Can everybody see the screen okay? All right, so what'll happen is the wheel will spin and the person's, it'll land on the person's name. Um, we'll uh, record that and Michelle, are you gonna drop your, um, information into the chat so that they can email you their mailing address. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just drop your, um, Michelle will drop her information in the chat. Please email her so that she can mail the certificate to you. Okay, is everybody that's on here or I think I've captured all the names I've been keeping up throughout. Did I miss anybody? Okay, um, Brittany, did anybody put anything in the chat? Because I can't see it right now. Nope, you are good to go. Okay, well, here we go. Let's spin.
John Jarvie. Okay, John is our first winner of one of the three credit classes. All right, we're gonna do our second one. Omar Tomlinson. And Omar, congratulations, you are our second winner. And for our final three, three credit class, here we go. Anthony Payne. All right, congratulations, Anthony. So those are our three, three credit class winners for tonight. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can turn it over to Dr. Muriel Nichols, who is our Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. And she's going to close us out this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Deanne. And I am so happy to see so many of you. And I'm glad that you stayed with us tonight. And now you know why CVCC is the right choice right now. You've heard the whole gambit. There's a wide variety of programs. There's support services that are wonderful and robust. You know, we've got tutoring, financial aid. We've got, we meet your basic needs. We've got scholarships. You will get a quality education, you heard it, that will lead to jobs, regardless of whether it's transfer or whether you go into one of the, the, uh, the technical fields. Um, we are going to meet your needs here at Central Virginia Community College you will find that the faculty and staff are student focused. We love our students. And the administration here is caring and engaged. We love our students. We are here for you and we see we are your community college. Now I want you to know students, and I'm gonna call you students now, this is your chance. This is your opportunity don't let it pass you by, whether you start in the spring, and I would encourage you to go on and get started for the spring, or whether you start in the summer or the fall. The opportunity is here, and this is your time. So let's get on with it. I want you to know that CVCC is where your future can begin, right here, right now, at Central Virginia Community College. I want to say to all of you, I hope to see you very, very soon. And I wish you all a good night. Thank you, Dr. Mickles, and good night. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a good hey, evening. Everyone. It's wonderful to see you. Bye. Deva. <clears throat> Hi, little one.